of feedback. And one of the most common misconceptions viewers seem to have about me is that I'm a guy who never smiles and doesn't know how to have fun. And that really bugs me because it couldn't be further from the truth. In reality, I'm actually very fun, relaxed, and easygoing. Now, obviously I could just be saying that to you. So tonight, I'm going to prove it. How? By spending the entire day with a complete stranger and measuring his dopamine levels during our hangout, comparing them against a baseline to prove scientifically that he did have fun hanging out with me. To start things off, I went on Craigslist and searched through the listings in the strictly platonic section in order to track down a stranger who'd be willing to spend time with me. I then sent emails to a handful of posters looking to hang out. And the next day, after fielding a number of inappropriate responses, I got a nice email from a man named Brendan, who had recently relocated to Los Angeles and seemed eager to make new friends. So we made plans to hang out later that week. But since this was all about proving to you at home that I am indeed fun, I would need to get evidence that cannot be refuted. So I paid a visit to Dr. Whimsy Anderson, a specialist in neurotransmitter testing, to advise me on how to scientifically prove a person is fun. When someone's having fun, you might see an elevation in serotonin, an elevation in dopamine, or, a, or an elevation of both serotonin and dopamine, both. So if their serotonin or dopamine levels go up when they're hanging out with me, that would mean that I'm fun? For them, yes. Dr. Whimsy said to get accurate results, I'd need to obtain two samples of either urine or blood from the person. One before our hangout began to act as a baseline, and a second at the end of doing several activities together. But knowing it would skew the results if he was aware of what was being tested, I would have to obtain Brendan's urine without his knowledge. So prior to his arrival at my office, I set up a tempting selection of beverages in the waiting area. Then, in the bathroom, I put an out-of-order sign on the toilet and attached a clear plastic bag to the urinal mat, creating a reservoir that would discreetly collect any liquid stream on its way down the drain. With everything set and me positioned in a van outside, I watched as moments later, Brendan arrived. To buy as much time as possible, I sent him a text telling him I was running late and to wait for me in the lobby. After only a few minutes, he began browsing the selection of drinks and eventually settled on a Dr. Pepper. Then, a half hour later, the moment I'd been waiting for finally came as Brendan got up and headed towards the bathroom, hopefully to deposit what would be our baseline urine sample. 